Hey, this video is on how to set up your Pro MIG 140. Uh, we're gonna go MIG welding, and we're gonna go ahead and use some gas here. But I first want to mention that you can use this with uh, flux cord wire by itself. You won't get as good of a product. You know, you get a lot of porosity and, and all that just using the uh, inner shield wire that you get like from Lowe's along with these things. So uh, right now we just got hard wire and uh, we're gonna use hard wire and gas. So do some big welding. So we got the, the whip that comes out of it, right? Got your gas cup here. There's your wire. So this wire is not, doesn't have flux on the inside of it. Got a ground clamp. Got a gas gauge over here, which we're gonna hook to the back of the machine. Hook it up to our argon CO2 mix. And you go ahead and set this on its side. The wire's already in there, but what you want to do is when you're setting this up is see. Um, I'm not gonna disconnect the wire and reconnect it, uh, but this wire's uh it needs to match what's on the on the rollers there. So you got 045 and 030. So you can use these rollers here. These things just pop out. When the wire's out, you just turn it like that and pop it out. And so right now it's a 030 wire. So it's important to get this matching your, your wire diameter because, and it'll say it on the outside of your wire. On the other side of the the uh, spool here, it'll give you your wire size and you want it to match the correct roller. Otherwise the thing will just kind of spin on itself. And so you can get away with a, a little bit of play there on your measurements, but um, you want to get as close as you can, if not exact. And so um, really when you're, when you're doing a new spool, you'd clip it, pull the old wire out, put your new spool in and then feed it through. Right, that just comes up like that you feed it through there all the way up into there and then lock it into place and you can adjust your tension on here this will adjust this pushes down on this so this you know if your wire is not feeding right this is probably too loose so you want you want this that way it grips that wire and feeds it on through your whip there so we're gonna try this setting there it's just kind of hand tight <clears throat> and this thing just plugs right into the wall. So what we'll do next is go ahead and get our, our gauge hooked up here. So this here, this end's going to go on the bottle. And this is going to hook to the back of the Right there. Sometimes you'll find that these gas fittings have reverse threads. The way to tell is there'll be a notch. There'll be a notch in the nut there. These are just regular threads. You always want to have your bottle secured too, like to the wall, so in case you bump into it, it doesn't fall over and knock the knock the head off it. Is our gauge set up? So I'm just going to tighten. I'm going to crank both of these connections down really good so <clears throat> you got a dual dual pressure gauge here so you got uh, this tells you how much you have in your bottle and this tells you how much is flowing out flowing out you can't adjust this obviously because that's how much is in there and then this one you adjust with this here your flow I just use a big crescent wrench Tighten it down. Okay, got both connections tight. Go ahead and turn the bottle on. All right, got about 2,000 pounds in there, so this baby's full. Turn that on all the way. You never want to leave these on. When you're, when you're done welding, as soon as you can, turn this off because argon CO2 gas is expensive, so. So you can see that thing go up. All right, so you want you want it about, let's put it at about, uh, we'll start right there. We'll put it at about 12 in that gauge. Remember, wherever you're welding to, you have to have a, you have to have it grounded. That way it completes the circuit, right? Because essentially what you're doing is you're, you are making an electrical circuit. You're shorting out 
the wire, the current, and that's what makes your weld bead and that, that metal will melt due to the shorting out of that circuit. And you're completing the circuit with your ground there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug it in. All right, now we just turn our power on here. Hear that thing fire up. Now what you wanna do is get a piece of scrap metal. Right now this thing is set for the max heat. Right, so you're gonna wanna, if you're doing real thin stuff, you're gonna wanna be way down here. Thicker metal, but you're not worried about punching through or melting away. You can be higher and then higher uh, wire feed speed too. So we'll start it about right there. Okay, you'll hear the gas come out of here when I pull the trigger. You should be able to feel it too, coming out of that gas nozzle. If not, you're probably clogged up in there and you're not getting good flow. So. All right, that's it. That's the basic setup. Now you're ready to weld. Get your uh, gloves and a uh, welding hood and you're good to go. All right, thanks for watching.